Man. All right, let's let's get into it. Let's yeah, get man. into it. So we got, we got our go. special Boy. guest. Hold on, we gotta make an adjustment. That's the that's the best word you come up with with special. <sighs> no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what about that dude? <laughs> we have one of the biggest superstars <laughs> in the game. Man, it's wild, but people be like that. London. <laughs> 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 Buys breakfast. Buys breakfast. Day one, day one. Hell yeah, man. Oh, Boy, man. London Brown is in the building. Yes, sir. In the so, building. so you're an actor, comedian, dancer, producer, everything, bro. You know what? Uh Look, when you when you black man, you gotta you gotta be able to do some extra <laughs> gotta, stuff, man. Right. You can't just do one thing. You can't just do one thing. When you look at when you think about Michael Jackson, singer, writer, producer, we just we initially people just think singer, but you gotta be you gotta have your hands in a in a few things, man. But you know, hum humbly, man, that's just God. He gave me these this stuff to use and to share and that kind of thing. Cause once you realize, man, like our gifts are not for us anyway. Right. So I'm just glad to be a recipient. Of them, I love that. You know, yeah, that, you're right. Our gifts aren't for us; they're for everyone else. It's for oh, entertainment. Man. But oh, see, that's, that's so why. That's why it's always funny when you see people who can't be humble enough to understand that. Right. They actually think it's them. It's like, for example, take like a rental car. Like, who flosses in a rental car? <laughs> like, it's not yours. Me. Right. You know? <laughs> well, anyway, 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 but for the sake of the uh, example. <laughs> No, but you know this. He is, sees my Instagram on the way here. He's like, "Oh, I'm bringing this up." Oh, no. <laughs> no, cause I see, I seen y'all in in, in y'all you know, little driveways. I see what y'all doing. I see what y'all doing. I see what y'all doing, man. I said, "Give me, a, give me a couple more seasons." Man. I see what y'all pulling up, and I ain't say nothing. Man. It was real nice. That's I know that hilarious. No, but no, but you're right. Dude. That's actually a really interesting point. I love that. I love that. Yeah, it's not for us. It's for the people. Like, ah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, man. Yeah, so so you, what was the first TV, like your kind of first big thing? Obviously, you've been doing stuff for years before Canaan, but. Uh, the, I guess officially, well, I'll put it this way. There's what what was a big deal for me versus what people may have recognized. But I did a show called The Hustle. Mm -hmm. uh, that was on Fuse Network. Shout out to Prentice Penny. Uh, he was a showrunner for Insecure. Right. Uh, with Issa. So when, we, when I landed that show, that was just cool because the reason, as the reason we got picked as a cast was because uh, no one knew us, and that was gonna work for the storyline. Right. They didn't want to grab someone who who had been really working. It wouldn't have worked for the storyline of us being some young artists coming up, or whatever. Right. So for me, that was that was you know because think about because it's been a minute for y'all though, but think about like those those first couple gigs. It's different when you're auditioning. But when you land something, your confidence becomes, it, it's different. Right. And your whole approach after that is just like, because, you know, initially sometimes when when you start out, you're auditioning and you got the size and you're nervous and you're trying to be. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But after you land something, you really just go in there and be like, yo, this is me. Boom. You know, you're going to be off you be off booking everything professional. But you really just be like, yo, I, I'm putting my best foot forward. And then if it's for me, it's for me. If it's not. It's on. So, uh, anyway, I'm very grateful for that project. But then the one I think that got all my stuff out of my mother's garage mm. uh, was HBO Ballers. Yes, sir. Ballers. How was that? How was Man, that was cool. It was so many, so many blessings to that because at the time, um, I didn't have an agent or a manager. Mm -hmm. So, the fact so that. You, yeah, how'd you get that? Fire. <laughs> dude, I got a call from a buddy of mine. Shout out to Chris Spencer. Um, oh, I, I, he was an actor on that show as well? He didn't do the show. Uh, he, you may have seen him. I mean, he's just one of those vet comedians and writers. Oh, Chris Spencer. I know exactly who that is. Yeah, I've seen him so, at the store uh, a bunch of times. Right, exactly. Yeah. So he calls the hey, man, HBO. The comedy store, you. not the store. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I know. We would be People are like, oh, the store. The comedy store, it's a... It's a uh, yeah, I was about yeah, to say, what store, store bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. the comedy store. Yeah. So he gave me a call, said, yo, HBO looking for you. And uh, he just passed my number along to him. I went in audition. My voice was really, it was so hoarse. I remember telling him, I said, man, if you guys can't understand me, let me come back tomorrow and rest my voice. But it went through. 
So the first thing was that, not having an agent or a manager. The second thing was uh, when I auditioned, uh, I just remember, you know, the, it was like a two month process. Right. Just the callback and callbacks. I'm still working in the after school program at this time, doing that's my hustle. And then um, when I when I booked it, they said, yo, would you, because uh, initially I was supposed to only be maybe one or two episodes right? kind of a thing. But they asked me to say, yo, you got the part, want to make your lead on the show. That was like the second thing. And then it was like, yo, you got to move to Miami. I was like, cool. You know, so <laughs> these things yeah. all lined up. And and then the next thing was because uh, the cast, these guys all have been working. Right. So my whole thing was I just wanted to make the character stand out in a way because I got to establish myself with all these faces. Uh, so... I began to start making the character really snarky and uh, just annoying. Dude, you, you bodied know. that too, bro. Dude, those those first it, three episodes, like, I, like I mean, the whole show. But yeah. Those first three episodes are a legit a masterpiece. Like, you, it had me hooked, and your character was so. Have you seen Ballers, Mike? I've seen a little bit. You would love really that watching. show, bro. It's Dude. unbelievable. You know, but because of that, it was important that I made him something. And not just another character, right. not just a friend, right. you know. But you got to like, bring really, yourself to it, and you that's, bring what, that's what you know takes you out of the just okay, he's this character. Like that's kind of what happened with me originally with Power. Like I was only one episode, and wow. then you know you bring yourself to it, and they go, "I could, we could write for this. We yeah, like exactly. writing for this." Mm -hmm. That's that was the goal, and so we were actually we was writing and creating. I was doing a lot of improving because right. again, I wasn't supposed to be there. So along with those things, I think it's like four or five things how God just worked it all out. The other thing was, what better place to be as a new face on the scene than all my scenes to be with Dwayne Johnson. Right, yeah, that's so crazy. So by default, you had to look at me, even if you didn't want to, because you was with, looking at Dwayne. Right. So if you can't be the hero, I was the next to play the villain on that show, if you want to call it that. And season one was just a, it was just a great look for me. Right. So I'm just, you know, I'm just humbled by the whole thing, man. I know that I don't take no credit for that, you know, other than just being prepared. Right. You know, but God set that up, man. So they were searching for you because had they seen you do stand-up? All right, so look, we got to take a little quick time out from the episode because we're out here on the West Coast. We live in our best life in our new crib. The Money Lion crib, the baby! Money crib. Shout out to Money Lion, you know? All thanks to Money Lion. Now look, you guys can live your best life, too. You're getting new signups every day, and it all goes towards the money job. We're giving away up to what? How many? Oh, uh -huh. Honey bun. Honey bun. That's from Money Lion. All you have to do is sign up, create your roar tag, and use the referral code Money Sign. The crew has to let them know that the boys sent you. Yes. Okay, listen. I know it's boring to talk about money, you know, finances, this and that. Money Lion makes it fun and interesting. You can, you know, from learn how to lease a car, how to create a bank account, everything. Their Invest, website. Save. Now look. No, we get the money away. Now we got some winners with the list for y'all because. Well, you gotta get your money. So we're gonna give away some money, baby. You know we give our we give our winners away a little extra cash on the side. Michael, who's our first winner right our now? Our first winner is Anna Leah Walker. Roar tag Anna Leah. I don't know why she replaced the A with X. It looks kind of cool, but whatever. You won. How much you won? She won one hundred and seventy-five dollars. Seventy-five. That's a that's a good little. You know what I'm saying? Get some kicks. Throw some gas in the whip. After that, too. You know what I'm saying? You could do you know you could do a little, you could do a little something with a one seventy-five. Shout out to Anna Leah. So our second winner. Oh, he. A little something. A little something. Our second winner is Devon Forty, and his war tag is Peso. Peso. He's all about the pesos, baby. He's all about the pesos. You got two hundred pesos. Shout out to Devon. Devon. Devon Forty. Oh. Our third winner. How much did they win, Mike? Oh, she won. A, okay, two hundred thirty. Two hundred thirty dollars. Debbie Dela Cruz. Debbie Dela Cruz is her war tag. Shout out to you. You won two hundred thirty. Two hundred thirty. I know. You have a night. Two hundred thirty. Shout out to you. Have a time right now with these gas prices, you could probably fill a quarter of your tank. Like, think about all the stuff that you could do. Our fourth winner, right here, Darren Williams. Darren, Darren Williams, Williams. Darren, Darren J. Williams. Darren, yeah, Darren, Darren, Darren J. Darren J. Will. You won a buck 85, $185. I mean, it's not as much as Deadly Crew, she's getting money out there, but you know what I'm saying? We'll have to catch up to her. She got the big bucks right now. She's in, she's in, the, she's in the lead. But shout out to Darren, you got a buck 85. Go make some shit with that, mama. Dude, this kind of sucks. Like, we left the money guns in New York, so we're not yeah, shooting we money everywhere. Shoot money I knew that. something was missing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I knew something was missing. Okay, last winner here for $210, we have... 
Shantae Knighton. And her war tag is? Shimmery Diva. I love how I can't read it, so I'm like, and our winner is? I'm going to say everything else. Michael, you have to read it. Shimmery Diva. Ah, you shimmery and shit. You shining and all that. You won $210. $210. So go claim your prizes, baby. Go claim the prizes. Go get that money. Make, make sure you sign up at Moneyline.com. Use the app and use the roar tag. The crew has it for your chance. Listen, we're giving away free money. You, free money. You get a free show with free money. Like It's like, what, yeah, what, what are we doing? What, what are we doing? And then at the end of the year, we're giving away $100,000. I mean, what? Yeah, they hate the boys. Right. They care at the end of the year. Go right. It's like, just sign up. Sign up. Use the referral tag. Who has it? No, nah, I don't even think they knew I did stand up. But so Chris was just like but this. I is... think I can't remember who's connected. I think maybe Chris Spencer's wife right. was around the table of something and she said, Oh, I think my husband kind of a thing. So it was I still it's still kind of fuzzy, but it right. went something like that. Nice. Um so uh, obviously Chris knew I did stand up, but they just knew that he knew me. Right. Or it could get to me. So it just worked out, man. I'm just that just was a that was a great situation, yeah. man. And and how long have you been doing stand up up until that point when ballers happened? Man, I um uh, maybe like mm, I felt like maybe five six maybe maybe like six seven years something like that. Yeah. So it was just so many things, man, that led up to that. Because even before that, I was touring with Chris Tucker as his feature. Nice. And right after we was touring, he decided to fall back on touring. He got into some other things, start working on the film or something. Right. So now I'm in this place. This was like two thousand. I think uh, I think maybe 2014 audition for Ballers, but what's wild about that was my first TV my it, my first TV show did six episodes, so that's that was Aaron, but I'm still in after school program. Yeah, people didn't understand what you're doing here, but you on TV, they don't understand like you ain't working unless you work and work. Right, right, right. You know, you get a gig, so that I'm still doing that. that. 2014 was like my brokest year. I had like I remember I had like 28 dollars in my account. It was just. All my stuff was in my mother's garage. It was just, it was just rough, right? You know. Um, but the thing I always tell tell people about or talk to them about is, like, I always live my life in anticipation. Like, I remember uh, finding some free theater classes, acting classes, and I just wanted to just be prepared for right. it. So by the time, you know, what was good about how all this stuff lined up was when I did. That small TV show, The Hustle, I'm a theater guy. So I had to learn, you know, just to know how right. to play in that frame. Yeah, right, like being on set, right. your mark, all, all of that. that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I understood the ideas of blocking everything cause from theater, but just really know how to play into the frame. Right. So I was able to learn. That was my crash course for TV. So by the time Ballers came around, I knew what was up. Then I was like, okay, they got to do a couple more takes. You know, let me... You know, save some of these bits and these jokes for when they cut on me, and right. Right, you know all those those sorts of things. You just kind of learn. I figured out how to really uh, pull the camera on a, on a set like that. So then, by the time the Canaan situation came up, I had fallen into a nice little groove. Right, where you know sometimes. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm like, okay, let me see. If they let's just say, y'all know, we we cutting over, they getting your stuff. I'm like, they cutting to me. Okay, get the tears. <laughs> yep, 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 exactly. Yeah. You be you be chilling when it's coming when the state covers it. You know, turn right. You know, but I do I do try to give them their exactly. stuff. Right. But you know, but I'm just saying at the same time, you know, those are those things that I learned from just working on, you know, those shows. It just got me ready for this. So by the time this came around, I just really felt. You know, in the groove, and also those guys are all really great people. Right? You know yeah, I mean? I, I'm gonna nah, take. You can tell by the character Marv. You can tell that like, you be in the groove. Like, oh, <laughs> I, I, love, be, I love it, man. You, know, you can tell you love playing that character too. You, know, like, you cool. have hella fun playing. Marv. Dude, it's just that, and this is no knock to the other characters, but the other characters have to really be who they are. Nah, fuck Makai. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Makai. He was God. talking so much shit about you before they started. <laughs> I love Makai. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but these other guys, they can't. I feel like, and, it, and again, no shade at all, but meaning like, we don't want to see Rock being goofy or being silly. Bro, we that, don't want to right, see her, right. you know, right. she had, she's she's just what her name is. She's the Rock of that whole situation. Right. Same thing with with um, with um Nick or, you know, with Joy. We don't want to see Joy goofing around too much because he's a villain in this situation. Right. And so the difference between those characters and what, I like about Marvin is Marvin isn't necessarily in any kind of box. Like yeah. Marvin can hold a gun, he right. can spill a drink on himself, right. 
He, especially in the second season, he can be vulnerable with his daughter. He have, he's crying with her and dealing with all of that. But then he's chilling with the chicks. So he's not <laughs> so... <laughs> We're literally... Brayden and Marvin are like so similar, but we don't even know it. Like, Dude, <laughs> it's one of those things where I just really enjoy Marvin because I get to... Right. I felt like so many other projects I couldn't stretch. And, right. You know, but I think these writers, and you guys know, the, the, the writers, you know, with this whole universe, we got some... They're really good writers, man. They're so good at making like... Like making it possible for each character to to go through certain like yeah, range man. of emotions. Not everyone like every character like like you said. Nobody really wants to see rock or unique, you know, be goofy or anything. But it don't mean that they in a box. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. They have so yeah. many other emotions. That right. Other things. Through. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that's that's hats off to the writers for that. Cause and that's why that's, that's one thing I do like. I felt like on Ballers, I felt like the writers really geared the show to Dwayne, and I get it. He's the guy. But the difference between that show and this show is, like you mentioned, they let all of us breathe in, in our own. Like, you know, people were asking me about the show, and I'm, I mean, and you guys know, like, we shoot out of order. We don't. Yeah, sometimes we don't really I'm not even remember. keeping up with everybody else's storyline because Marvin has his own th journey he's doing. Right. Because yeah. of what you mentioned, the writers know how to do that, mm -hmm. and and as they like us and deal with us, they start to learn our voices and they start writing. For stuff for us, right. and that's what's really cool. Was that shout out to Sasha Penn for that? He's kind of the stuff. man, bro. I he's love Sasha. Sasha. He's good dude. Sasha yeah. go hard for the boys too. Shout out yeah. to Sasha. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. good dude, man. I love that. I love that. So, so you were on tour with Chris Tucker. What was that like? Was it crazy? Tour was like. it? Was it? Were you kind of like <laughs> tour like? No, you know what? It, but it's not like you got to think. It ain't like Kevin Hart and his boys, right? Mm. This is Chris Tucker, the big brother. And I'm I'm a student, right. full on right. student, student. Actually, by the time I started touring with Chris, I had been doing stand up like a year and a half. So we just kind of clicked, but it was really just me being a student. That meant he needed me to, you know, carry his bags. Yeah, you're an opener. That's that's kind of how it goes. Record right. his set, right? Cut his hair, drive him around. I was cool with that, right? You know, no ego there. I was there to learn. Right, and learn, just, you know, and, and, and that kind of thing. So that when it was time for me to go out and headline, I learned some things from him. Like, you know, I brought one of my boys right. and, you know, and paid him whatever little I could give him out of whatever I was doing. Right. But just understanding how to treat people. He's always told me, you know, to stay humble, be focused and keep God first. And so I just, I just actually, I just spoke to him yesterday, man. And I just appreciate him just being open, even talk to me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As a guy who's been doing it, he ain't got to call me. Right. But mm -hmm. it's cool that he's, he was solid for that, man. Yeah. He helped me to get through uh, that period before I landed ballers. Nice. So, you know, people that can be cool enough to help you eat, right. you got to respect them, man. Yeah, bro. I love, I'm such a that's big Chris Tucker, Tucker Chris, Like, you know, Chris Tucker. Like, yeah. That's a legend right there. Yeah, yeah, man. That's, 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 Absolutely. Yeah. that's dope. That's so. So then um, you did ballers and then... In between, were you, were you working on other stuff? Were you looking for other projects? Were you focusing on um, on stand-up yeah, before Canaan happened? Like, what was that in-between period well, like? The, the period was actually really short, blessingly. I got, man, I got so many of these, these, that's why I love doing these podcasts and different things, because I have so many of these stories that people got to just hear. Right. But I'll give you this one. So after I landed my first TV show, my agent at the time, they wanted me to... Uh, go like do a beer commercial or something. And I was just like, yo, I was like, I didn't really think that was my lane. Right. Not that I have a problem with, you know, drinking it as a character in the show, but at the time I was still working with kids. Mm. My stepfather, you know, alcoholic. So I know what, what drinking does. So right. I didn't want to, that wasn't just with my lane. Right. So I was like, no, nah, I don't think I want to do that. They got really been out of shape to the point where they said, man, you, you know, you're lucky we even want to represent you. I said, exactly. I said, whoa, okay, that, that didn't feel right. So I remember I pumped, your brakes, pumped, I pumped your the brakes right on there. I spoke to Chris about it. And his lawyer, he said, man, <clears throat> they kept it real simple. He said, man, just write, I wrote a one line. Thank you for your, your services. They're no longer needed. That was the end of that. Broke away from that. Yeah. So that's why I was agentless at the time. But what's wild about that sort of thing, man, is that, again, when, when, when I finished Ballers, so that's my first agent story. So when I finished Ballers, I kind of got, and I, and I was with, uh, one of the large ones, I, I'll say it that way. So I got the call. Who is it, WMECA? You hey, 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 was, I may have to circle back with them or something. You know? Maybe that guy just didn't care. You know, but so what they, I got one of these calls, which was, hey, man, uh, yo, man, how's it going? 
I said, yo, everything couldn't work. I'm doing. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. Hey, listen, man. Uh, just want to let you know, man. I, I, I think we're made too big of an agency for you, man. We probably should just find something smaller. I said, oh, this is that call. I said, okay, well, cool. No, no, no worries. Right. I'm not that guy. I don't. First of all, I don't put my trust in man anyway. I right. don't. People so fickle, they so up and down. I, I, you I trust God. After you be let down so many times, you be like, all right, well, yeah, I deal with God, man. So he runs all this stuff for me. So I was like, it was no problem. My manager calls. She was like, yo, don't worry, we're gonna find. We'll find somebody. Don't even worry about that. Right. So in between that fall of 2019, um, this was like September between September and Christmas. Right. I get a call from Robbie Reed. She was like, hey, uh, we're doing uh, American Soul. This is the um, the the story of not Cornelius Soul Train. On. She's like, yo, you want to come play Boosie? Uh, Boosie <laughs> Collins? I was like, yeah, I'll buy it. So I'll go down there. We sh shoot for a week or whatever it is. I'll do the episode and learn the bass and play, learn a little lick or whatever it is. Then I go to Winnipeg, Canada, uh, and shoot... Uh, uh, horror film sort of a thing. Yeah. So I, those two little gigs kept me in the mix. And then shout out to my Jason, uh, my my agent, Jason. She, my manager said, yo, we got this, this agent wants to meet you. He's familiar with the work. I said, cool. And we sat down for 10 minutes. And he said, yo, man, here go. Uh, watch, here's an audition for you. It said power. Now, mind you, I thought, let me explain. In my brain, I said, Power, I've been seeing the ads all over Times Square. Power is done. Right. So I say, well, maybe this is just a mock title. You know, because sometimes, you know, it trick the title. And right, don't right. So I was like, okay, well, well I said, maybe you just want to see, I don't know. But I just said, well, I'm auditioning for Power because it's done. I do the audition. Let's say that was December, uh, January. I, uh, they say, hey, you got the part or whatever. I fly out to New York. I still didn't even know I was part of the universe. Right. Because then it they went so from, secret. <laughs> they so so secret. Bro, you don't know, even know. So then it, it was that. Courtney like opens the door. She's like, <laughs> you don't know. We're going to take a quick break from the episode for our new sponsor, baby. Support for today's episode comes from True Classic. I don't know why I sound like a wrestler. This brand new sponsor has the absolute best fitting t-shirts a man can buy. Listen, baby, we excited, all right? We excited because, look, finding the right t-shirt is incredibly frustrating. It's either too big, too tight, too boxy, like, you know, too tight in your stomach, make you look a little fat, whatever, get you a little pudge. And we're not in high school anymore. It's time to upgrade. Yes, almost all men's t-shirts are designed to look good on skinny models with six-packs. Fuck them, you know what I mean? It's like, what about for us regular people? <laughs> but most of us aren't packing heat and anything but a few beers. You know me? You know, a little below average. You know what I'm talking about, okay? You are wearing the wrong clothes, Michael. What should we be wearing? Listen, listen, you should be wearing true classic tees, baby. Look, they taper off towards the bottom, but they fit together around the chest, you know what I'm saying? The shoulders make you look a little stocky, you know what I'm saying? It's time to highlight the best attributes. With a t-shirt, you can always confidently throw on. Hey, right, listen, look, look, look. True classic, they don't just stop at their tees, all right? Nope. They are your one-stop shop for men's essentials. Super easy and simple to fill out your wardrobe. From polos to workout shirts with the same flattering fit to boxer briefs designed with a pouch to keep your balls nice and comfortable. So, Mike, they have this dope pack builder on their website where you can custom bundle all of their essential products and save even more when you discount with our offer today. The boys are always giving you offers. Listen, we saving y'all money and we giving y'all money. Hey, look, this is for the big boys out there. You know what I'm saying? They got a long body option for the tall guys. You know, if you look like fucking Slenderman and shit, get the tall, you know, tall option, you know, long fit. You could order up to triple XL on a staple colors, whether you have abs or flabs. Listen, their clothes look great on all body type. Now look, it's about time you learn how to dress yourself properly, man. Like, it's 2022. Look, upgrade your wardrobe with True Classic. Get 25% off at trueclassic.com with our code CREW. And free shipping, including on all purchases over $100. You know how the boys feel about shipping. Man. Except if you're buying merch. We do actually charge shipping on that. But back to the ad. 100% <laughs> risk-free guarantee with a 30-day return policy. Stay classy with True Classic. Your tad bod will thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at that now mind you also it went from the size being called power then it was something called Raising Canaan so mm. I still don't know right and then let me give you this one I never watched power at all mm. not because I didn't want to at the time I was I was on Ballers so when I would run to people on the street they were big fans of power uh, Game of Thrones and, and it was Ballers or whatever so I was like man my whole thing was, I said, man, it'd be great to be on that show, Power. Because they was 
the streets love power. Yeah, man. Bro, so that was crazy. like, man. You I'm know like, how it is now. <laughs> I was like, I, I love ballers and I'm grateful. Right. I'm working. But I said, man, I can't even watch the show. I said, Danny. Oh, they're killing it over there. <laughs> I didn't want, so, so then I didn't watch it. So when the show came about, I had no idea about any of the Power Universe, anything of nothing. Mm. So I didn't really even know that I was part of what I was a part of until after like a month, after we shot like the first episode. Damn. Then I was like, oh, this is a, uh, we're part of all of them. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Power situation wraps around the corner. So like, hey. <laughs> all right, this is pretty good. I mean... <laughs> It, it really is a really dope thing to be a part of, you know, because the legacy is just, it's Insane, cemented, bro. bro. It ain't, right. You cannot mention, Canada. you cannot right. not mention power. Bro, you know? it's it's crazy. There's so many shows and now, like, I don't know. I just, I'm so grateful. Yeah, like, I've created so many lanes for so many people, bro. Right. Like, it's, it's and it's and think about it, it's just starting. Yeah, well, like, it, is like starting. it is just starting. Like, like, think of it, bro. Yeah, yeah, literally only in season two, like two. We're in three. <laughs> uh, Force is starting two. Like it's yeah. just really just starting. Power it's was a, the original it's flagship. A really, it's, it's a, a really great situation because, because, like, and like you mentioned, with a show like this, that's why people at the end of the day, mm. you know, whatever people feel about Fifty and the trolling and all, I'm mm -hmm. like, you got to give it up to you him, right? You got to respect this whole situation and the brainchild behind this and. Even if he's not, let's say, the writer or this, that, or the third, mm. the the brain that it takes it to organize and get everybody right. around you that can do it and set the orchestration of the whole thing right. and everybody that's in, in, in Courtney and Sasha and everybody else, it's, it's, a, it's a really... It's tough. Blessing yeah. situation to be it's, a part it's of. It's so man. funny because usually when a, a season is airing of Power of 50 gets in a beef with someone, but season two of Raising Canaan just aired and he just rekindled his relationship with Floyd. So you're like, <laughs> maybe 50's turning a new leaf. I, th I saw that. I, I thought so, it was a joke. I thought it was too. It's not. Oh, okay. Well, They're legitimately cool again. Coming to, he, he going to Taiku. Yeah, he going to Taiku. <laughs> <Taikoui, man. laughs> but then I thought it was old. I, that's how it threw me. I thought yeah. it was old. Then I thought it was fake. I didn't know. Nah, he on. went on the Breakfast Club, and apparently he said that um, he went to a, a stand-up show of Monique. Mm. And Floyd, the money team were all there, mm. and 50 was there, and she did like 10 minutes where she was like, um, man, why aren't you guys like cool? Like, what? Mm. And then that's oh. kind of what started the, yeah. the conversation. Isn't that Shout crazy? Out Shout out to Monique. Shout out to Monique. Yeah, Shout Shout out Monique. To Monique. <laughs> that's <Nice>. crazy. <laughs> that's super tough. Yeah. So now, like, all right, so you into the to the universe now. You into, you know, filming. Like Wait, you back, said, back you up, back up. I want to hear the audition story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we, I like to go, like... Yeah, yeah, that is true. That okay. Is true. You got to hit the ground. Yeah, and, 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 and then ask your question. Because all that, those stories always give me the right, chill. Right, because those everyone's are... is always different. Mm -hmm. So, so... I do got an audition story. Yes! <laughs> Everyone does, bro. Everyone has a power audition yeah, no. story. So, first, I, I, I submitted the tape. Uh, that was before Christmas. And then, like, January 1st or something, when I... This is now my second time meeting this agent for the, you know, uh, early on. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, let me walk you through the office. And I'm walking, I'm meeting everybody that's a part of his agency. And then in the middle of meeting one of the people at the desk, they're like, oh yeah, by the way, you got a call back. I was like, okay, cool. You know, even people don't understand, even just a call back, mm -hmm. just so kind of settle. Cause the first, the first auditions that is, is the nerves, but a callback just lets you know at least you in the ball. Yeah, at least they watch you or something. They watch you something wrong. So all of that is encouraging. I'm so, actually curious, do you wear the same outfit for the callback? Do I wear the uh, I always wear the same fit for the callback because I'm really? like I'm like, they liked what they saw. I don't know if it was this purple shirt or not. Hilarious. But I always wear the same fit for the callback. So that's just a little smart. tip from your boy. That, that is pretty smart. smart. That's why I never thought of that. Yeah, really I always wear the same fit, everything. The same underwear. I'm like, they show a little. I'm like, <laughs> that's what I never thought of. They subconsciously just make the decision. Like, well, right. Yeah, they wouldn't even notice that like it's the shirt that you wore from back in the first place. Everything I've ever home. booked, I've reworn the same clothes. That's wow. Funny. I'm sorry, go on. No, no, you good. So I just, um, yeah, I do the auditions, the auditions. Then I finally get a chance to go to uh, Gower Studios. Now, mind you, I had prepared three episodes. Um, fortunately, and I, I, can't, I don't really know who this, who this was exactly, but fortunately, one of the actors made a choice in his audition to yell the fourth scene. So I recognized the first couple lines. I was like, okay, doing that. And I'm still in, going over my stuff. And then I hear him read. Like I said, the fourth scene, I'm like, I ain't, I don't know what that is. So I'm scrolling <laughs> I through. I said, oh, shoot, Marvin got, there's a whole other scene I didn't prepare for. Mm. I go into the audition, this is Sasha Penn and a couple other people. And I just told him, I said, yo, I just 
uh, realized there's a fourth scene I didn't get. Can I take a moment? He said, yeah, go take, take a moment. So I went in there, I went outside in the parking lot, just learned the lines and came back. Point is, thank goodness that actor made that choice to right. yell all the lines. Right. And that was his dynamic to hit for whatever he was going for. Right. But because he yelled, I was able to know what was going on. But And also, shout out to... Christy Lofton. Christy Lofton. My guy. That, yo, right. that, yo, My that, guy. Yo, that boy. I love yeah, Chris, bro. He's the warmest, <laughs> nicest Super human cool. being, bro. Super yeah, cool. We Chris, met man. on the set of Ballers. We didn't have any scenes together, but he came up there on a the day that I was shooting, and we, we just been cool ever since. Yeah. And the thing about that was, I'm so happy for him, is when I, um, I think he was just leaving the audition when I was getting there, something like that. For for Raising Canaan. So Raising so Canaan. so um Chris Lofton plays Gernard on Force, just so yes. everyone knows. Yeah. So we we ran into each other and I was hoping it would have been dope for us to both be brothers right. on the show just because I know he had been wanting to land uh be a series regular. And he was super cool. We already knew each other. So I was like, man, that might be cool with the dynamics. But it didn't they went into another direction. Um shout out to Malcolm Mays. But the point is yeah. The fact that it turned around, he landed force. He and he and he, what's the what's his brother's name on the show? Oh, I don't, I can't remember. Those two, it just they look alike. Right. It just they dead ass do look alike. So I'm just really, glad really everything like, was meant to happen the way it happened. But listen, yeah. I just like 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 what we always say, but they always gonna keep you in the back in the back of their mind. So if they even though they didn't pick up Chris for for you know book three, they picked him up for book four. And, right. and it was a better fit yeah, for him. Yeah, I feel like book four is it was a good. They shoot in like, Chicago. Yeah, he's from Chicago. He's from, yeah, yeah, oh man, it's just. I a, remember I went out there. He's like, yo. Anything you need, nigga, hit me. <laughs> I'm ah, like, I'm okay. like, I bet. <laughs> yes. Anything. I'm like, I love that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's your so what what was your next question? Well, my question was like, cause you from you from the West Coast. Yeah. So like, you know, you locked into, you know, a, a, a older era of New York. Like, how was that, you know, just being in New York in the in the what is it, eighties or nineties? I don't know. Ninety, ninety one. Um, you know, I'm a fan of the nineties anyway. So, mm. you know, it's always some nods and some 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 stuff like that playing. The whole thing with that. My whole thing was just making sure we carried the the, the accent and the vernacular and all that kind of stuff, the phonetics. I do that. a great fucking job yeah. doing that. <laughs> Bro, you I know, do a great job. it was, we, shout out to Doug. We got a, our, our voice, a vocal coach, dialect coach mm. is just, he nitpicks it to a T. And you, when you look at him, he just looks like a, 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 a white guy just <laughs> right, right. who deals with some sort of, uh, he looks like a maybe a high school professor of some right, sort. Right. <laughs> But when I tell you he he knows those words, man, and how to really he he breaks. I mean, <laughs> and so word funny thing for about it, he's got his glasses. Yeah, he's right. like, you actually can't say bet or facts here because that wasn't originated until <laughs> he's, he's cold. He looks that way, but he's super super cool, and he knows the stuff, man. He, like word for word, he's on set every day. He's on set. He was on set mostly every day, and then he had to like. Uh, Return to some other project that he did, but we still we were calling, we were Zoom. <laughs> right. um, he he really helped because I had an idea of the accent because I would do this uh, on stage. I do this Denzel Washington bit where um, I talk about you know um, things that might uh, uh, what's the bit? I have this this bit is about <laughs> if if Denzel <laughs> Washington <laughs> wasn't an Oscar winner, but if he was just <laughs> You're the, uh, if Denzel <laughs> was a guy. Basically, the bit is on stage. Sometimes the audiences they're a little tight. You know, they want to laugh because whatever. They right. just. But the bit is, if Denzel Washington um, wasn't an Oscar winner, but he had a regular job, the audience y'all wouldn't treat you would treat him differently if right. he was just a regular. So it goes into, um, you know, if you worked at a uh, a McDonald's, ma'am, can I? Can I take your order? You know, whatever, Yo. whatever that is. Yo. You know, Yo. you know, and it's that sort of thing. That so, shit is crazy. So my dialect oh, kind of came from that because of doing um, Washington and quarters, and, and he's from uh, Mount Vernon. Right. So I had an idea of uh -huh. the accent, but when I really got on That's set, point. you know, Doug, the, the 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 coach man, he was able to help us figure out and just. Even understand how to just to pull the words in and just mush the word, all that little stuff. Mm -hmm. He just really helped. Right. And then I'm watching Makai too, even uh, as he's grown. Cause like first episode, everyone's trying to get their footing. Right. Yeah. But then by the time we get into second episode, I'm looking at Makai. Makai 
is like he got he got, he got that yeah, whole jaw right. fifty mm-hmm. must on the words thing, yeah. and even with with everybody else. That shit is so. Cool. Yeah, but that shit is so cool to I me, know. bro. Like that's that shit is. Fire. Yeah, that's Especially. what that's what excites me as an actor. Yeah, bro. like having to do stuff like that. Like, yeah. like you just gotta copy a whole another character that, right. has, that has already been cemented, and like, and it's not even like you're playing him right, at right. the age that he would have right. seen that. You're playing a younger version of him, right. so it's like. It's not. It's something they never seen before. So it's you technically something fresh. that you have to match in a way, but also you make it your not, own. Yeah, because right. there's nothing really there to match because right. he's a way different age in the in the eyes of the people. That's the thing. That's why with these characters, everybody had their own set of homework to do. Mm-hmm. Like you know, just you know, because when I first met Malcolm. He was talking to me in the New York dialect. So I thought mm-hmm. he was from there. Yeah. He, he did it in, in Symphony, too. Symphony, a British dude. The, 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 the um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rocks. Yeah. I love to- Toby. Yeah. Toby. I'm Great like, guy. I, I remember when he first spoke, I was going to say English. When he first spoke <laughs> in his accent, I was thrown. I was way off. I was like, yeah. yo. Yeah. <laughs> Had no, but that was good. He sold us on it. You so know. where is Malcolm from? I really thought he was from New York. No, he's from, he from the West Coast. Where? Yeah. We, we both from L.A. Yeah. I thought he was from New York. Damn. He looked like a New York nigga. <laughs> yeah, he, he carried himself. So. Yeah. But like I said, when you, when, but if you catch him totally away from anything power, he mm-hmm. he definitely represents the West Coast. Yeah. He's going to do that, yeah. Are, th- are there any like stories from season one, like filming or shooting, anything like that? Because you guys did shoot post-pandemic, right? So guys, we're going to take a break from the episode and we're going to talk to you real quick about men's health. Obviously, I'm in the new studio. Michael's not here. I came in today to talk to you about um, our friends at Blue Chew. So did you know that one in 10 men have ED? And one in two men on the crew has it, have it as well. But we're not going to talk about that. It's all about confidence, right? And when it's time, you know, to do the business, sometimes stress, anxiety... Or a bad day can affect your performance and ruin the mood, the fun, everything for both of you. And nobody wants that. BlueChew.com is coming to you to the rescue. It's a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at the fraction of the cost. So listen, BlueChew's tablets help men achieve their full potential. You guys know I like my drive-by ads. Full potential in the bedroom and combat all forms of ED because bluechew.com is an online prescription service. There are no visits to the doctor's office. There are no waiting in line at the pharmacy. You don't get to go in there to get laundry detergent and also a little assistance in the bedroom. You can do that discreetly and it comes to your door in a discreet package. You know what I mean? The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com and consult with one of their licensed medical providers. They're licensed. It's not just some random guy in a van that's selling you pills. You know what I mean? I've done that before. Bluechew.com, baby. You'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part, online. Bluechew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. No pun intended. Strength with length. You got it. Don't like swallowing pills? No problem here. Blue Chew's tablets are chewable, or you can just throw it in the protein shake in the morning like I do to get the day going. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, and they prepare and ship direct, so it's cheaper than a pharmacy. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free. When you use our promo code CREW at checkout, I don't know why I'm yelling at you like I'm Gary V. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's it. Again, that's bluechew.com. Promo code CREW to receive your first month free and some assistance, baby. Dave, are they putting that, the blue chew in my car? Oh, we're still rolling? All right. Bluechew.com, promo code CREW. Put it in my trunk. <clears throat> Back to the episode. Yeah. Is well, it- no, ex- yeah, no, we did, when pan- pandemic was, we did, the February was shut down. We oh, picked back like up. one episode. Yeah, we st- one episode. Right, we we and then we we picked back up the fall. Right. Uh, so it was the city was still <clears throat> fairly shut down. Yeah. But as far as stories, I just know for me, I just felt like, okay, here's one. Uh, <laughs> He's like, I don't know if I can say but, that. <laughs> well, I don't know if this was a if this is a set one, but for me, I'm I was living in Harlem, so I was walking these blocks That's a every day. Perfect place to be when you when you filming the show. Right. Like, you like, know, wanna... <laughs> I, I was in a mix, mm-hmm. and so for me, I just wanted to be around. The culture. The culture, the streets, and just black people and the whole thing. So I remember I was walking every day, and nobody, you know, this before the show came out. So when the show came out, I remember one time passing these group of dudes, these like corner boy dudes. And uh, first of all, I didn't know I stayed a block away from the project. Right. Like the, the stinking Lincoln projects was like behind me, but I didn't know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm used to the hood, right. so that was whatever. 
But I remember passing these dudes on one day, and it was like, yo, I think that's dude from the show. I can hear him. So I turned back and I was like, you know, thank you, man, for watching the show. Oh, man, you killing on the show, man. We, 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 you you got to pass now. <laughs> like, how long have y'all niggas been thinking to rob me? <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been walking these streets. I was like, where right. this come from? You know, but Harlan showed me a lot of love, man. The streets was cool. They was they was they was they was good to me, man. They they, they show. But then I also got, I ran. I was walking home a couple times. I see dudes. Hey, yo, you know Marvin is about me. I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, forget yeah. 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 it. Give my oh. number to fifty. Tell him he need to write me a check. Yeah, I was, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I was doing this for real. People man. really be, you know. And then of course, and then after that, there was an episode with the jukebox stuff. The, the people really was fussy about that and coming up to me. You only be hitting your daughter like that. I'm like, listen. <laughs> Yeah, I was. Yeah, that scene. That scene is actually crazy. How, yeah, it was how was it filming that scene? Like, bro, it was just getting draining. into the emotion. Yeah, I, I'm sure it was draining. And then honestly, I didn't know if the writers were just trying to dramatize the the, the story. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I had to. I just checked with my with my friend, my LBGT friend. I was like, "Yo, is this legit or like what?" And they told me it was like, "Man, definitely." You know, when the kids come out to their parents, it's a whole big thing. And then we all. Also considered the time period. Right. It's oh, 91. Yeah, back in the like day, what? Yeah, yeah. And, and Marvin is, Marvin, today is different. Marvin is an old school kind of a dude. He didn't even know what, what to call her. I think right. he called her like a Lebanese or something. He didn't even know. He just, <laughs> you know, Marvin's, Marvin, that's why people got to enjoy this second season when we get to see Marvin go through his therapy. But the whole thing was, it was just really draining because Haley and I, we didn't talk before. Shout out Haley. Shout out to, to HK. And we didn't talk before, so... You know, I purposely stay a distance from her. I don't know if she knew that necessarily, but I, we didn't really, the way the scenes were set up, right. in addition to me laying low. Um, so it was awkward, and not awkward, but like the fact that we didn't really know each other fit well with the story. Right. Mm. And so it was really us just trusting each other. And she brought what she needed to bring. We had a good uh, uh, fight coordinator and... It was just draining because it was just emotional and you know it's like we talked about those takes is take the, you know you want to make sure you're giving it up yeah. each take yeah. was it rory was it rory the uh rory bradder the fight coordinator was it no i don't know I don't, we like to shout out the crew here yeah yeah, yeah make a shout out to yeah. them for sure um i don't know he was a white boy bald head yeah yeah that, that's uh, uh chaz chaz yeah yeah, yeah that's chaz, what it was chaz shout out to chaz yeah shout out yeah, to chaz oh chaz. yes rory rory okay yeah, rory, yeah, yeah. man my fault rory <laughs> <laughs> <I'm trying. laughs> rory sound like a white name so i had to think about like yeah. what white dude now rory the man <laughs> no yeah. rory is the rory who, the who directed that episode oh that was he he's over he was with you i think he's with you guys or he's Her producer guy? um damn i can't think of his Bar. name Yes, Bart. Bart. Mm. I think that's Bart's thing. I did not know Bart directed that episode. That's crazy. Yeah, Shout out Bart. He directed on Kane. I didn't know he was directed. Yeah, I didn't know Bart. that either. That's awesome. Yeah, he did. He did that. Absolutely. Yeah. He nice. like he liked his takes. Oh, I was just yes. about to say, y'all was there for y'all was there for a minute, wasn't you? <laughs> was I was just about to say, y'all was there for a minute. Yeah, we, I think we start. We, we we came in on a on a Monday and then left on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Like how many takes? Oh, Bart's gonna love that. <laughs> we love you, Bart. And by that time, that's when we really started acting. We just when it came for the crime, we just uh, we just okay. Now we acting. Right. We had to act at right. that point because we just we was like we got them all left, man. We. Uh -huh. You know what's so funny is I I heard a story. So David Fincher is like obviously one of the greatest directors yeah. of all time. Uh, he does like 80, 90 takes or something. So. Every actor that's worked with him says um, one through like 15 is crisp. Mm -hmm. uh, 15 through 70 is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And then 70 through 90, something happens where everything is like absolutely like flawless and locked in. I can't imagine doing 90 takes. I can't takes, imagine doing 90 Because we'll do like locked. four and I'm like, are we done with this? <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine doing 90 takes. Right. Though. I'll be like... Right, right, right. Mike, Michael will literally like, get it in one and be like, let's move on. Like, yeah, we got like, it. Like, God, like, let's get it. Maybe, like, we could do one more for safety, but I think this was the one. Right, like, right. That's the thing. That's the thing is that, well, one thing that happens is you're definitely off book by the time you finish it. Like, it's take after take after take. But yeah, at, at some point, we just be like, all right, let's, you know. But also, I think every director, we deal with so many different directors on the show. So, so many different styles. Like, sometimes... Like shout out, shout out to Mario Van Peebles, man. Mario, um, for those who don't know, creator and writer and director of New Jack City. Um, yeah. You know, with Mario, he 
because he's an actor, the communication is different. Sometimes yes. they know how to, you know, right. certain directors may not need to do as many takes because they know how to vocalize what it is they yeah, want. Their notes, right. they, their notes pull out certain things. Yeah, yeah, and they just, they're just able to say, give me a little this and that. And you're like, okay. And they don't and even they, have to say too much. It's just like... Mm. They adjust, or we adjust, and we, we give them what it is they want. So, every, you know, that's the cool thing about each of these directors. You kind of learn something different, and you learn to trust them, and, and, and they pull out a different side of you that you didn't really know. And so... That's a fact. Uh, his episode was probably one of my... It was one of my favorites because I had my, I had my Denzel moment. Uh, <laughs> at the end of the, at the end of that season, or when I'm taking vengeance back on Neek for just about killing my brother in the burning building, and I get to get out the van with the with the Tully, and I'm out there. Yeah. That's just <laughs> and it was slow motion. That's just my. That's like my favorite. Right. Shout out to Denzel. That's my. That's my personal version of Denzel. Just like. Out the gun, right. it's just, right. it's, just it's cool. It's just cool. That's I know. All. Sometimes you shoot something and you like see it and you're like, "Ain't no way yeah. I just did this." Right. Shit. <laughs> like the, yeah. I, it was for me personally the robbery scene with Kane. I was like, "Oh my god, this shit was crazy." Yeah. What, what was the one that wow. you said that you wa- uh, uh, Joe, uh The when you went and seen Tommy. Um, when many men started playing. Yes, yes. Uh, that scene is hard, bro. When I'm, I'm posted up at his car. I got the good Amiri fit on. I got the Amiri on. Right. I'm posting up. No, no, was it Amiri? Yeah, it was Amiri. Yeah. No, it was Amiri McQueen. McQueen. McQueen, McQueen. Because it was the Skulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the McQueen on. I was posted up on the on the, on the the Mustang or the Camaro. I think it's a Camaro. It was sleek. Yeah, it was, it was sleek. And then the 50 song just fades in. I'm like, Man. damn. Oh, it's crazy. I'm like, <laughs> First of all, I got to give y'all a shout out. I didn't say nothing in that scene. I was just like, damn, this shit fire. I got to give you a shout out, man. They. That it was crazy. Just, uh, I was thinking about this when I saw when you had Billboard drop in Times Square. Mm. I was like, I said, I can't. I, I said, it has to be wild, dude, to see your face. Like, you know, because we, blessingly, we on the Billboard and, and stuff like that throughout the city. Yeah, you want Sunset. But, yeah. So you want sunset I, I, right I haven't now. seen it yet, but so <laughs> no, I, I haven't no, been over there. Go to Saddle the Ranch. Second <laughs> ours comes out, it's right, it's right at Saddle Ranch. You know Saddle Ranch yeah, yeah, Shop House? Yeah, yeah. Dude, the right if you there. eat outside, you are literally looking yeah. at your face right there. When our Billboard comes out in four months, if you think I'm not taking every girl I know to Saddle Ranch <laughs> every night, I'm like, this table is reserved for the next three months because my like, this is right there. She got to sit on this side. So she, <laughs> you got to sit on this side. Right, she, she'd be like, wait, is that you? I'm like, oh, I had no idea. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a clean look. So when I saw the, the image, I said, man, they they... It was a nice look in Times Square, man. Especially for like for like someone like like me being from New York, like being in Times Square all the time. Like damn, like yeah. I'm little, I see all the lights. Like damn, this place is unreal. It's beautiful. And then I grow up, and then like I see my face in that same. Exact it's place. crazy. It's just like, and you you've been there for years. Yeah, yeah. It's been like years. Two, every, two three for years. For season six, they had his whole face wrapped around. And that's what I'm saying. That wrap around is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy we bro. we had one in Times Square for for season two, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We but, went to New but Mike has had some big crazy ones where I'm like. Yeah. So, and he'll be like, yeah, it's cool. And I'm like, Mike, your <laughs> face is all over the subway stations. Nah, you know I'm what's like, mad funny? The one, the one, the one time I flipped out when I seen my own face, I was on the way back from Posh. I was on the way back from Reef Shop, right? Right. And I'm making the left turn to get to the crib. And there's a bus stop right there, nigga. And I see my face on the bus stop. Me and Pessy is driving. Pessy is driving. I said, yo, what the fuck? And then Pessy just hits the brakes. He's like, yo, what happened? I'm like, nigga, look. And I'm like, bro, I'm right there. This is right by the crib. Like, this is crazy. They had a whole video of you shooting the gun and then the the bullet hit it. Yes, bro, in time. Yeah, that was crazy. crazy. But yeah, yeah, seeing my face by the crib, on like on a bus stop by the crib, that was was crazier than Times Square. I I don't know why, bro, but I just stopped. I was like, oh, shit. And then Pessy was like, what the fuck happened? I'm like, look, bro, that's weird. I I took a flick right under mine. It's literally the profile picture on every dating app I've ever been on. Ah, that's hilarious. <laughs> I get it. I mean, it, it is it is dope, it's man. It's, it's, it's wild because sometimes I remember looking at the billboards and thinking, man, how dope is that? Like, right. to, to just... To be out there like that in that in that sort of way uh, is 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 dope, man. It's, it's yeah. a nice it's a nice feat, man. I love that. I love that. And so now we can get into a little season two stuff. So by the time this episode will come out, episode sure. one and two will have aired. Episode it's, one was fire. Episode one was fire. Oh, thanks, was, man. That shit was lit. Yeah. Is is there anything specific in the first couple episodes that like you wanted to talk about, or any like things that you remember that you're like, you know, I think just um, the whole thing with at least with my character, Marvin, is that people are trying to figure out how is he going to repair this relationship with his daughter from right. season one. And because also I think people got to understand, when we got into that scene, when Marvin and his daughter got into that altercation, they got to understand it wasn't like Marvin 
got into that fight and then went in the living room to watch the game. Right. Like he was really broken down by that. Right. And so I'm glad that people get to see uh, Marvin going doing the therapy thing because I think a lot of people be needing that sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, especially with all the mental health issues and everyone you know seeking out now. But sometimes, man, people don't realize. I'm like the fact that. You, every time you get mad, you want to punch a wall. Like, bro, you need to get some stuff worked out. Right. You know what I mean? So hopefully. punch the shit out of some more. <laughs> Man. <laughs> so hopefully people watch the episode and, they, and right. need that, they'll be able to walk away with them and be like, yo, we like Marvin. I connect with Marvin. That could be a, a form of therapy for them. Man, that's what I'm saying. So hopefully, you know, I think people can look, really look forward to that. Yeah. And just again, because season one was such an introduction for everyone. I know people were just like, initially people felt like the first couple of episodes were slow, but they the audience don't understand. We can't come out just shooting. Right. You gotta, what the hell are y'all going to watch? You got to build up to it. You got to learn these characters, be right. invested emotionally. Because then if someone died, who cares? Yeah. We're who shooting, who gives a shit? Exactly. Right. So I, the writers did really good with just moving the story along in the, in the nice timing. Uh, so that now the second season, people will really, I think, care more right. about everybody because they know us. That'd be the best about going into season two. Like yeah. you got season one out the way, everything is set, and now everybody gets to like really Mayhem. take on their fucking. And then season yeah. three, bro. <laughs> and then season three is just like our shit about to come up. That shit is crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, finished season three already. Yeah, we're yeah, done. We, we wrapped we like wrap two, couple, three weeks ago. Yeah. Two, three weeks ago, right? Yeah. So we'll we'll be a couple probably I don't know after you a couple months after you a month after you we don't really know yet but um, it is interesting though as actors like. We don't write the show, but sometimes there is a little protectiveness over a character. Like sometimes mm. people will be like, why was Marvin abusive to his kid? And you're like, well, I didn't write that, but also this yeah. is why. Yeah. Yeah, Which yeah, is interesting because right. I do that with Braden. I had to do that shit sure. a lot with Tariq. I'm like, listen, man, Pops want to send me to jail. He want to right. send Mops to jail. What, what, the, what was the family going to gain out right. of that? I feel that. I definitely get it. <laughs> right. I felt that way because the whole big thing in season one, I was, I was, people just didn't understand. It was like, man, Marvin, you can't drive, man. You really can crash in all these cars. <laughs> that was a lot of the fan questions. They're like, ask him why he can't drive. <laughs> but listen, that's what I'm about to bring. Now, this is uh, this is one we can chop up. Look, I got to tell you, sometimes I be like, I be trying not to, I be like, some people just don't process properly. Right. People act like Marvin was in the parking lot of a Costco just backing up hitting cars. <laughs> His nephew was about to be Killed. He right. look when it comes to family. Excuse me. When it comes to family, Marvin was moving. Right. He didn't care what happened to that car. <laughs> he gonna crash the car and been saving his nephew. He gonna crash the car and been saving his brother. Right. It didn't. It didn't matter. But people gotta understand. He wasn't just like I said, just driving and just running and stuff. He was being shot at. Right. He was trying to shoot back. There's you know, a lot going on. There's a lot going on, <laughs> right. man. And so people gotta really understand that, like Marvin, you know. And then also. Like I said, we never see Marvin on the bus, so getting another car, flipping it, it ain't nothing. It's nothing, right. bro. <laughs> Marvin, Marvin in season one went through, he went through four cars. One of them was an undercover, undercover hoopty type joint. But he went from, I think, what, uh, a red Benz, a blue Benz, and then a black Porsche. Oh, yeah, nah, he was like, in that shit. He, was, he, wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't. And then the other thing people were talking about, you know, well, why, why don't he have it? This insurance gonna go sky high. <laughs> This is 91. <laughs> niggas, niggas wouldn't think about no paperwork in 91. And he under the, he under the table working. What well, people talking about, man, yo, what about your Geico? Stop. Yo, Doc Geico. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. on, y'all. I need y'all to understand. He's older than shit. It's 91. Marvin ain't got no official paperwork in that car. He ain't looking sure. for no. The number's been scratched off. Right. Marvin is all kind of stuff in that car. Marvin is not carrying paperwork and not right. even. You burn that car, you dump that car. Right. People, but if I understand, the audience ain't never been around street people. If they don't know that, then they don't understand. Do you, do you ask questions on set like that? Like, go up to a writer and be like, because uh, I, sometimes me and Mike will pre empt is that, I don't know if that's the right word, but like we'll know what the fans will say. Like, for example, I, for the Kane and Braden robbery scene, yeah. I'm like, Braden not wearing a mask? I'm like, am I getting killed at the end of season two? Like, <laughs> Why isn't Brayden wearing a mask? And then the writer literally was like, oh, no, this is a trap, Julie Store. Like, it's not the cops looking for you. It's going to be guys, you know. So I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, it's, owned, it's, like, it's like it's owned by, like, some crooked motherfuckers. Right. Like, yeah, so it's that, not that, like an establishment. That's like still such a big thing. Be like, that's why didn't Brayden wear a mask? And they're like, no, it's a trap, Julie Store. It's not a... Uh, they, selling, they selling other shit. Right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So do you ever go on set and go, uh, why would Marvin do this? Or, or, or are you just, like, put full trust in or... 
No, I, I definitely, a, a lot of questions came when, again, for the jukebox and Marvin scene. I had a lot of questions to see if, how legit that was. Right. Um, so, yeah, sometimes I will go and try to figure out because... Obviously, we're trying to get into the writer's heads because they have an idea. So we're just trying to make sure. I ask questions because I try to find out if I'm on the same page. But then also, shout out to Sasha, man. He's he's also cool with listening. Right. You know, that's what I do like, especially with the directors, too. They We will sit down and we'll talk. But then also, I think, as you guys know, as you start, we start doing the second and third season and whatnot, we... A lot of times we know these characters very well, yeah, right, even right. better than some of these directors because yeah. directors are coming in new, Correct. and we know like oh, I don't we think he would move like that. <laughs> we right, right. We right. We, he wouldn't move like that. He wouldn't say that. I remember in this season, they had a line where Marvin like says he, he refers to Jukebox Mom as like you know uh, referred to her as a, as a B, and mm. and I was like ah. I was like, I don't, I don't know if Marvin would go that far, but right. he don't like or whatever the, the, the disagreements are, but he ain't going to go that far. Right. So they trust they trust us. I like uh, that. To do I like that. when it's collaborative like very, that. Very, very. Yeah. It's cool. It's super, yeah. super cool. But, you know, it's also okay. respectful, too, you know, as opposed to just coming in and, uh, you know, because some, some cats that do that, I wouldn't do that. I'm like, yo, here's the new script. I got it. And be like, who's the new? Like, yeah, I wrote it. I wrote it on the way in. Uh, we're gonna <laughs> pass these out. I don't, you know, I right. respect the lines. Right. But they they let me play, and you know, with with the lines. But I always try. the writer's good. I don't really have to, you ain't gotta right. get do Never too much. Never gotta do too much. Do you do you find it hard to improv um, with '90s um, with the '90s writing? Oh no, I'm right in there. I feel like you I'm improv right a lot. Oh, I do a lot, bro. I feel but, like you, know, you improv a lot. Also, because again, this is some of this come from the theater stuff. Yeah, exactly. But, as we mentioned, when you know these characters, man. Like I'm in a groove. That's why I did. That's one thing I did like from going from season one to season two. We only had like maybe a month, three weeks off, and they picked right back up. Right. You know, we didn't have no hiatus. So you were in that mentally. Still in it. it was draining. Like to just be oh, because oh, yeah. I really feel alone and out there. Like I got, I know people out there, but it really it, it was pandemic too. I wasn't trying to get sick. It was it was literally. That's what you was going. You know, for. hit the gym, go home, and I'm like. All right, this is my life. I'm working, <laughs> right. and the, you know, between studying and being on set, you're busy. But I knew I, I <laughs> when I got back home, I had a whole, I had a whole little breakdown mm, that right. I never even told anybody. Not, not like a mental breakdown, right. but just an emotional one. Right. When I got back and I saw my family, and there was a there was a gathering uh, set up for me, and uh, I remember I just I just was like, whoa! I didn't even know I missed. People, right. I didn't know that was even inside. I know now. I understand like why people. Sometimes you watch a reality TV show, a cooking show, whatever, and then they'll be like, you know, since you won this challenge or that challenge uh, today, your mom is here, and people just fold. I didn't understand that. Right. Mm -hmm. But when I had been away that long, I was like, yo, I, I, I missed. You know what it was too. Season one, I we didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody that I was on the show. Some people. I didn't knew, your family. Uh, my my family knew. Oh yeah. My my core. The right. people that I met with when I returned new. Right. And the thing about it is, it's, I realized that everybody's not happy for you. So I was carrying this thing of this project I had booked, but I didn't say anything because, honestly, I just don't feel like it's a lot of people I can talk to about it. Right. Because people don't understand. People get tight. People get just get all weird and crunchy yeah, they about it. Maybe think you're trying to shit on them. Maybe think you're it's trying to It's just too like... much, bro. So for me, I just don't talk. So then when I got around people I, that I realized loved me, they didn't care if I was on the show or not. Right. Mm -hmm. It just felt good to be around solid people, bro. Well, we're happy for you. You can come on the crew as a podcast and talk about Man. it because we're happy. For, no, I'm kidding. No, I love yeah, for it. real, I love though, it. like, I, it's facts. And I deal with that same exact thing because I live out here and I, yeah. shoot, and I shoot in New York. So... We we work enough where we can't travel a lot, but we don't work enough where you're busy all day long. So yeah, it's like yeah. you hit the gym, you're like, mm -hmm. oh cool, all right, I got nothing else to do the rest of the day. It's here. It's you can't you can't do like an acting class or, or a theater production or this and that because you're like, I don't know where I'm gonna be the following Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. So I'm crazy. Bro. I go through the same thing, bro. It, it was that's it's, so interesting. It's I, a mint. It's a whole mental thing. The amount of stuff that you're deprived of when you're filming. Right. When you're in that mode and you're in locked in for six months, you really don't even notice how much of the shit that you really used to. Yeah. You're deprived right. of, bro. I, I noticed that when I when I was in Jamaica not too long ago. I was just on the beach, like chilling by myself, bro. I'm like, 
Right. Yeah. All I do I, every I, single day is speak and respond and answer questions and like speak yeah, to yeah. people. Like you're in a whole I'm, thing. Like I'm here by myself. I'm on the beach listening. I'm chilling. Then I hear these motherfuckers coming behind me. I'm like, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. here we, yo, what we doing? What we about to go? I'm like, He's talking bro. about them, not me. <laughs> I'm like, bro, let me just have some peace, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you right, feel right. me? But yeah. now nah, it's real though. Like I, I also had another another moment like that. Not too, like three days ago. I'm just like, damn, like it's a lot going on, bro. I took a deep ass breath. I'm like, damn, this is. Yeah, it's a lot, man. <laughs> yeah, like men mentally, the the process, like you said, people don't know. You be locked in. It's great for. It's great for the results of the show and the characters and you you do what you do, but mentally it's, it ain't no joke, man. Yeah, it it's really no joke. Acts. And you don't notice how serious it is because you're just like, damn, I just want to work, I just want to get this, and I want it to be the best it can be. So you you kind of like put it all that shit on the back burner. You just like whatever, but right on. But when you're done, it's like, damn, all of this is what I've been deprived of. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it is rewarding, you know, when people receive the show, man, so, yeah. and and really dig the work. We appreciate y'all. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's Facts. important. All right, we'll get, we'll get you some fan questions in, and we'll get you on out of here. All right. So first question from um, Snoop underscore, underscore is my dog is, what do you think is unique about Marvin that goes over everyone's head that people don't realize about Marvin? What's, what's unique? I think that people don't really realize that Marvin is a little bit of everybody. Uh, they really pay attention. That was on purpose. Meaning, when you see Marvin with when you see Marvin with a with his gun and doing anything like that, that's a little bit of unique. When you see him being scolded by Rock, that's the that's uh the Canaan yeah that's Canaan. Canaan stuff. And when he's being emotionally vulnerable, that's the jukebox stuff. But when he's when Marvin is calling shots throughout the 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 season. That's his strong rock stuff, you know. So, uh, and then you also got, uh, well, pause. And you also got, when he's charming with the ladies, that's a little bit of Lulu. So Marvin is one character on the show that can kind of float in these different spaces. I love that. You know what I mean? And so- You can't see that, in, especially in the beginning of the season, like the first, like, of the show. Like, he was definitely in so many different, like, atmospheres, and right. he was just navigating through all of that shit. Yeah. He's, he's a survivor. Yeah. He's a survivor. You know? <laughs> and, it, and also, too, because at first- when, you, when, we, when people first meet Marvin, like season one, they like, oh, he's the uncle that just be messing up and eating. And <laughs> I know that, you know. So I said, okay, I'm gonna let y'all, I'm gonna let everybody sleep on him in the first couple episodes. Right. But I knew where I wanted to take Marvin and show some other stuff. That's why even with season two, we get to really see some other layers to Marvin. That's my whole thing. I just want to layer Marvin right. in a way where he's not just the uncle eating. Mm, right. He's more than that, you right. know what I mean. But you had me crying that first episode at the premiere. But when when you were eating the chips in that hospital scene, the second I saw, I was like, oh. "This motherfucker knows his character." Yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah that's a fact. Yeah, yeah. He, knew, he knew the yeah. assignment for the show. He, well, and shout out to to Sasha because that was something that I brought to him. Was like, "Yo, I want the character to eat," you know. And and again, did you just, regret it? <laughs> you know, it only <laughs> that's a yes. That's only yes, face. I only regret it. I honestly didn't regret it. I just say. People gotta understand, like when they see the take, they just see that one take. But I gotta eat them chips <laughs> twenty seven times, long. you know, all and, day long. And then this last Damn. episode, like this was, goes, hey, that's why I was asking. I'm like, I know how how it is, bro. In this first episode of the second season, I'm outside the courtroom with the glizzy, and you know how <laughs> crazy that it is. I'm like, like, you the glizzy goblin. <laughs> I can't say Paul. I can't. I gotta just take that on the chin. I'm like, oh, man, that's take number forty seven. I'm like. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was like, I wish. Yeah. That's the one thing I said. I, I said, I can't do that no more. Yeah. I, I gotta, it gotta be a, it be a cheese sandwich or something else. I gotta, you know, I can't Dude, be. You know. Brayden had an ice cream, uh, an ice cream uh, cone season one, and I ate like six ice creams that day, and I was like, don't yeah. ever write me Done. eating some shit again. <laughs> I was sick. I was like, I can't do that again. So now, actually, what I do is, depending on what the scene is, I'll try to put things. Eat, eat food that I, I can really use. Like, it might be some celery or something. Something, you know, or fruit. Keep it light, keep it light. Fruit, some right. real, you know, so I can deal with it. So a lot of that stuff, by the time people see what they see, that's the acting. Right. It's looking like I enjoy that food. Right. After 28 takes, I'm oh, yeah, like... Oh, yeah, nah, yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah, not for real, though. Yeah, no. For real, though, bro. They do a good job at providing the food, but yeah. I, but that, again, that comes from theater because I just wanted to find ways to pull... Uh, to keep Marvin interesting when he didn't have lines. Right. And that was just my small way. And I think like Malcolm, sometimes he'll chew gum or different things. So everybody got their thing, but 
I just I just always enjoy what we call like busy work like that. Right. Mm, that's a fact. Next question from Chino Nuski 2X. He said, which role does he like more or liked more? Has he liked more? Reggie man, or Marvin? It's definitely Marvin, man. Because like I said, Reggie was cool, man. But I couldn't. Re Reggie was cool. I did what I could do with that. And I felt like the fact that I like arcing, arcing the character. So even season one, um, Reggie was really annoying and irresponsible and, and leeching, as people felt. Mm -hmm. But by the end of that season, he w became responsible with the funds. So I just like moving characters like that. Right. So and, and I think the writers can feel when we we help the characters move that way. So, but it's definitely Marvin for sure. Marvin like just looked. He just looked fun to yeah. play. Like he's he, fun, he, man. He's funny. He get the girls. He's fun. All <laughs> he of that. It's, 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 it's like <laughs> it's great, man. Right. And then he's not a he's not a slouch either. Mm, right. You know he's he's not. You know. Hence why he's in anger management classes. The dude <laughs> will snap. But he, he, if you think about the, the family, though, this family, is they don't really necessarily go around causing problems, but they will respond to them. Yeah, they solve you know? them. So even with, with Marvin, Marvin's not a mean person, but he will he will clap back if you get disrespectful. Right. And, and so Marvin is, Marvin's fun, man. All right. All right, last question before we get you out of here. This is what I want to incorporate every question from now on. If you yes. could play another character in the Power Universe... On original power, on ghosts, on force, who would you want to play besides Marvin? Or even Kanan. But uh, you know, you say uh um, any character in the power universe that oh. you that you could play, like, oh, I wanted to be ghost, I wanted to do this. Who 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 would you play? You know what? Maybe uh I don't know. Cause I like the I like the wardrobe. I like the wardrobe because y'all stuff is contemporary. <laughs> yes, sir, Mike. Give me, give me. So the war, I remember. I think Woody was. I forgot the scene, but he was like under a, a, a bridge, a freeway yep, pass. Yeah, he, he had the. I think he had the Louis Vuitton jacket. I think. Was it? I think black, and it was something. Yeah, I think it was a black. black. I said, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think I know what you told. It, it was with I think at your premiere, he had on either you or him had on like a black or white sword or something. Mm. Um, and I think I was gonna say I don't know if it was you or, or Woody, but I was like the wardrobe. Yeah. I said, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so is fire. I don't know. So maybe I don't know. Maybe something, but then also I like uh, Ghost got uh, Amari got his, his stuff was he just strong man. He just mm. was just solid. I mean, like he didn't look like no slouch either. So I I, I like characters that look that are strong like right. that. Just like yo, because I can see the challenge in those. Powerful. Things. He's yeah. a powerful for yeah. It's yeah, yeah, no yeah. pun intended. Yeah, it's, so it's it's a lot of a lot of good stuff, man. That, yeah. you know, I can always I can appreciate about the show. Well, hell yeah! So plug your stuff. Obviously, any shows you got coming up. Season two of Raising Canaan is out. Out. We are wow, in full baby. swing right now. Yeah, so full swing, baby. Full catch effect. up, please, on the Stars app. Yes, uh, I'm at Real London Brown, and I'm sure I'm gonna be working some clubs uh, when I get back to New York. So man, come out and enjoy that stuff and. Uh, we oh, gotta yo. come see you. We gotta come see yeah, you. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's yeah. why I've been working. I've been hitting these clubs real heavy since I've been in LA to get back in my groove. You hit the factory, hit factory, comedy store. Factory, comedy store, uh, improv. improv. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm in there. I'm in there, bro. If Boy. you if you hit a show before you go, we want to see you. Hell yeah. Yeah, I know because they might. I'm, if I extend spot. this stay, then I'll, I'll let y'all know. Please do. Yeah, yeah we'll definitely come out to that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Super fun. So yeah, your Instagram, TikTok, anything else? Yeah, that's uh, you can find me in the real in the brown, and also enjoy. Uh, London's White Tea Talks. There, oh, there's a segment this. on my page where I just break down relationships or whatever. I really break down anything. It's inspirational, it's all that stuff, but those should be fun. I'm going to go to TikTok with those pretty soon. Hey. Hell yeah. Mikey? Um, I know to find me. Where's 22 or Michael Rainey Jr. on Instagram? I actually just got access like back to my Michael Rainey Jr. account. I haven't been able to log into that shit for like three weeks, two weeks, but I'm back. Um, TikTok, Where's 22? Um, if you ever go to Jamaica, Kingston, Catch Twenty Two Lounge, go hit up my lounge, and yeah, vlog, subscribe vlog, oh yeah, vlog. Vlog. we gotta talk about that lounge. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you got a lounge out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamaica, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Power has been good. This <laughs> Power has been good. Shout out Cody <laughs> Kemp. Come on, Mike. Come on, Bob. Been real good. I thought he was talking about like his. You can catch him on the, on his Instagram account. That was the Instagram name. <laughs> nah. No, he talking about a, a physical lounge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Restaurant slash lounge. Catch 22, 7 Trafalgar Road in Kingston, Jamaica, if you ever take a trip to Jamaica. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Subscribe to the Where is 22 vlogs. Yeah, We're going to be doing a lot of stuff. Boys is in the West Coast. We in LA. Look at the, the LA studio. Boys is in the studio. West Coast now. We on the, we on the new coast. So, yeah, tune into the vlogs. Where is 22 on YouTube. Yes, sir. G at Gianni V. Paolo, Instagram, TikTok. Um, 
Get you it. have it. Are here. you at a million yet? I'm not at a million on Yo, TikTok what the yet. Fuck I know. Is going on? Shit, Get him to a million. Shit, what are y'all doing, bro? Yeah. What are y'all doing? We got London Brown in the building. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We appreciate it. Michael, give us one. Give us an LA one. Where's the shit? Oh, oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> y'all fine. Yeah, relax, relax. <laughs> Listen, baby, the crew has it, you heard? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> the crew has it, and you have it. Thank you so much, London. Man, thank yes, y'all. Appreciate y'all, brother. That shit was fine. bro. We appreciate it. That's a fire episode. Back. That's a fire episode, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Guy. Let me get Dude, you. It has to be. I, I still. I'm still tripping.